Hi, I'm Joanne Murkow, a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and this is Bridging the Gap, a series of digital art engagements. In this four-part video series, we will be looking at Valley of the Catawissa in Autumn by Thomas Moran. It will be helpful to have paper and something to write with to respond to the prompts in the video. Please pause the video to collect what you need. Before we get started in discussing this work of art, let's take a few moments to look at it closely. Start by letting your eyes wander around the work of art, taking notice of some of the details, such as the colors the artist is using and the objects you recognize in the painting. Please pause the video to give yourself a few moments to look. Looking at artwork can be a bit overwhelming. There's so much to take in that sometimes we walk away confused and dissatisfied. Luckily, an educator and art critic named Edmund Feldman created a simple yet effective four-step process for exploring artwork called the Art Critique. This four-part video series will tackle each step individually. The steps are as follows. Describe, analyze, interpret, and decide. But before we move on into exploring the first step of the Art Critique, describe I'm going to give you some tidbits of information about this piece. This artwork was painted by Thomas Moran in 1861. It is oil on canvas and it measures 39 and 3 quarter inches by 63 and a half inches. And it hangs in a permanent collection at Crystal Bridges Museum. Moran was given an assignment by Harper's Monthly to illustrate for a piece about the Catawissa Railroad. And just for a little geography, Catawissa Valley is roughly about 150 miles west of New York City and 130 miles northwest of Philadelphia. I know what you're wondering. Where is the railroad? The answer is Moran left it out. He was part of an art movement called the Hudson River School. These artists wanted to portray the American landscape in its most pristine condition, untouched by mankind. Another interesting fact about this piece is that Moran was there sketching in the springtime. So why do you think he painted this landscape in the vibrant colors of autumn? I also want to note that Moran was instrumental in the establishment of our national park system. When his paintings of Yellowstone and the Rocky Mountains caught the attention of Congress and President Ulysses Grant. So let's get back into the first step in the art critique. Be ready with your paper and writing instrument of choice in writing down your observations. Step one, describe. In this step, we're not going to worry about content. Just describe exactly what you see. Let's start off with the type of artwork this is. It's pretty apparent to say it's a painting. Here are some other questions to guide your looking. What kind of painting is this? A landscape? A portrait? A vent? Or still life? The answer is, it's a landscape. A landscape painting, drawing, or photograph is artwork which depicts natural settings, such as valleys, mountains, rivers, trees, etc. Is the painting realistic or abstract? This painting is realistic artwork since it is based on true to life representation on what nature or objects or people really look like. What's the time of day? The season? What's the setting? What's the geographical area? What's the climate? What's in the background? The middle ground and in the foreground? The background of a landscape is the area of a scene which is farthest away from you. The foreground is the area that is closest to you. And the middle ground is the area that's in between. Take your time and explore each section individually and write your observations. So now you understand the first step of art analysis is simply seeing what is apparent. And in the next video, we'll explore step two, analyze. See you next time. Thank you for watching. This has been Bridging the Gap from Crystal Bridges.